One of the things we really want to focus on, especially with Season 8 and the start of Shadowkeep, is a renewed focus on PvP. Of all the things that Bungie has ever said about Destiny, there is none more infamous than the fabled, renewed focus on PvP. It's been over two years since that statement was made, and for the most part, it was nothing but hollow words. It's been over 600 days since a single new Crucible map was added, Iron Banner only just recently received two new weapons, for the first time in over a year, Trials of Osiris continues to be the poster child for Bungie's overly stingy loot systems, and the competitive playlist? It was taken out back and shot. But the lack of new content or foundational improvements for PvP pales in comparison to the most egregious aspect of the Crucible, cheating. When Shadowkeep launched, Destiny 2 left the secure confines of Battle.net and migrated to Steam. And once that happened, the complete lack of anti-cheat measures in Destiny 2 was exposed for all to see. Players were revive hacking and impossible to keep down. Others were flying around like Harry Potter with infinite heavy ammo to boot, and others were bot-walking gods with simply perfect aim. Despite a downtick in revive hacking and infinite heavy ammo, as well as Bungie's collaboration with Riot Games to take down the cheat maker Gator Cheats, the sheer number of people that continue to cheat in Destiny 2 is absurd. It has gotten so bad, especially inside Trials of Osiris, that anytime you die to a sniper, you have to wonder if he's toggling on cheats or not. The competitive integrity of Destiny 2's PvP has been completely eroded away on Steam. In this video, I'm going to explain my approach to how Bungie can put a serious dent into the cheating problem in Destiny 2. We're going to discuss how cheating can be identified and then subsequently dealt with, and we will then discuss some positive collateral damage that this anti-cheat philosophy could have on one of the other biggest problems with Trials today, account recoveries. Let's jump in. Despite the dire straits that Destiny 2 finds itself in with the rampant cheating, there is still hope that things can get better. People have been screaming at Bungie for years now, where is the anti-cheat? Expecting Bungie to implement anti-tampering software to prevent cheats from being injected into the game in the first place. And while that is the ideal solution, it's a solution that just isn't realistic for a game like Destiny 2, which retains an easily exploitable peer-to-peer -peer networking architecture, despite dedicated servers and cloud-based computing becoming the norm for the rest of the gaming industry. Instead, Bungie needs to take the philosophy of contain the breach. What I mean by that is instead of trying to develop software that prevents cheating from happening in the first place, they should create automated software that detects and identifies likely cheaters based on statistics and big data. Bungie already has a very strong data analytics team that they lean on to understand player behavior, and it would be completely within the realm of possibility to use those statistical models to identify and root out cheaters. And Bungie themselves seems to be leaning in this direction, as very recently, Bungie made a job posting for a data engineer for anti-cheat purposes. Let me walk you through how a system like this could work, and how it may be the only chance that Destiny 2 has to clamp down on the cheating problem with the constraint of peer-to-peer -peer networking. For starters, let's take a look at the profiles of confirmed cheaters on Destiny Trials Report. Take a look at Jimbo1, who is an absolute monster in Trials, but has a laughably bad KD and Comp and General Crucible by comparison. Now look at Jimbo2, another Trials All-Star. My man's got 100% headshot accuracy with his sniper rifle and an 85% headshot rate 
with his pulse rifle. And now look at Jimbo 3, who has an even higher pulse rifle headshot ratio than Jimbo 2. Starting to notice some trends? The vast majority of the time that I run into someone in-game that I think is cheating, I can simply pull them up on Trials Report and have near irrefutable proof instantly that they are in fact cheating. When a human like me can look at a subset of all the PvP data surrounding an account and be extremely confident in my assessment of whether that account is cheating or not, then why the hell has Bungie not established an automated process that does this in the background? Bungie has even more data than what we players can see through the API, and I really think that the best solution that Bungie has to curb the cheating problem is to establish a hidden cheater rating for every single account in the game. Bungie already has a combat rating for every player in Destiny 2, of which we do not know all the inputs and weightings for, so it is absolutely possible to develop a similar type of rating that puts an absolute, non-subjective, numeric value to how likely it is that an account is cheating. You may be wondering, how would such a cheater rating be devised? What would be its inputs? Couldn't cheat programs just find ways to keep their cheater score low enough to not be detected? As for how the cheater rating would be calculated, I think there are a number of easy inputs, such as headshot percentage on individual weapons, kill death ratio and kills plus assists to death ratio, win percentage, statistical disparities between game modes, and also recency factors. One of the easiest ways to immediately pinpoint a cheater is to look at their headshot percentage on individual weapons, in particular sniper rifles. 99 times out of 100, someone with a headshot percentage on a sniper rifle that is over 90% is cheating. Some of the best snipers in the game, like Benny, only have a sniper headshot rate in the 70 percentile range. There are some exceptions, such as 140 RPM snipers, which do horrible body shot damage and are more likely to only get headshot kills as a result, as well as some extremely cracked controller players like LeClear. The point I'm making is that the headshot percentage on individual weapons is a very strong way to sniff out the blatant aimbotters. Another input to the cheater rating should be the KD and KAD ratios for a player. Again, if you look at some of the very best players in the game, such as ZK Mushroom, their KDs and trials are almost all below three. Yes, there are some exceptions for people that only run stacked, but for the most part, legitimate good players never crack the three KD range let alone 4 and beyond. Anyone above a 3KD in Trials is immediately suspicious. The way I think about it is, if ZK or Panda don't have stats this good, and yet still attract audiences of hundreds or thousands of viewers on Twitch to watch their skills, then why is Jimbo69 with his 4.5KD not also raking in support on Twitch for their supposed elite skills. Oh yeah, it's because they're almost certainly cheating. Another dead giveaway to cheaters is their win percentage. Again, using ZK Mushroom as an excellent example, he's been hovering at a win percentage in the mid-80 percentile range for basically his entire career. When you encounter a player that is well into the 90 percentile range for win rate, it's a pretty clear indicator that they're juicing. High win rate alone isn't enough to peg someone as a cheater, but it's another strong indicator of foul play when this number is exceeding some of the very best legitimate players in the community. Now, let's talk about what might be the biggest indicator of someone cheating, that being a complete discrepancy in their stats between different parts of PvP. When someone is rocking a 2.2 KD in Trials and a 0.7 KD in General Crucible, you pretty much know 100% that player is either cheating or has someone recovering their account, which is also against Destiny's Terms of Service. And yes, most people have some discrepancies between their trials, comp, and general crucible stats, but when it's a huge gulf, it is very, very suspicious. And lastly, this would serve as more of a tuning factor of sorts for the cheater rating, would be recency. What I mean by this is that looking at lifetime stats only can mask obvious cheaters. 
For example, if Jimbo69 has been playing Destiny since the first game launched back in 2014 and has been an average player all that time, their win rate and KD are likely to be average. And not just average, but average with so many kills and deaths and games played that if they decided last month to start cheating, then even if they started playing like a god, it wouldn't move the needle much on their lifetime averages. For example, on Trials Report, you can inspect a player's weekly Trials KD, and if it's a number that is much higher than their lifetime average, it can be a strong indicator of cheating or an account recovery. And recency doesn't just have to apply to things like KD or win rate. Bungie has data on the back end to see how stats like weapon headshot percentage change over time, as well as big spikes in player performance, such as over the course of a week, a day, or even when it's match point in a trials game, which is when a closet cheater would start juicing. These fluctuations in player stats can all be monitored and rolled into a player's overall cheater rating. Bungie could also use recency in the sense of the age of an account. If a newer account starts achieving very high stats like KD and win percentage very quickly, then Bungie could tune the cheater rating to go up exponentially faster. With all of this data, as well as some appropriate tuning factors, this hidden cheater rating could become Bungie's ultimate weapon against cheaters. The question now becomes, how should this cheater rating be used? This is where the brilliance of this kind of system shines through. First off, this process would be fully automated, with no human in the loop at first. The biggest problem with Bungie's current security posture is that they have a human review each and every report of cheating. This sounds nice in theory, as you don't want people to get wrongly banned, but when thousands of cheaters are out and about ruining the game, there is only so many accounts that a human can get through in a day's work. Look at Warzone, which has banned over 500,000 accounts. There is absolutely no way that a human was in the loop for all of those bans. There simply isn't enough time in the day, even if you had hundreds of people whose only job was to review cheater reports. What I would do is establish certain thresholds that changes how Destiny 2 handles a player's account. Additionally, I would have these actions be taken only for Trials of Osiris, the competitive playlist, and Iron Banner, aka the endgame PvP modes. At a high enough cheater rating, I would have the game start matchmaking that player against only other people with high cheater ratings. This would effectively shadow ban people that are likely to be cheaters without having to actually ban them. Once someone reaches this cheater matchmaking level, if they are legitimate and not actually cheaters, then eventually their cheater rating would take a hit and lower until they are no longer put into cheater matchmaking. For people who continue to cheat, which would now be against other cheaters, their cheater rating would continue to rise until hitting a new threshold, at which point that player would be suspended from Trials, Iron Banner, and the competitive playlist, and they would remain suspended from those endgame PvP modes until a human manually reviews their account to make a determination of their cheating status. To avoid cheat makers getting around this by simply not cheating after getting into cheater matchmaking, I would also suspend accounts from Trials IB and Comp if they fall out of and then rise back into cheater matchmaking multiple times. What this system would do is protect the integrity of the PvP modes in which it is the most critical to win. Now, I can already hear people typing down in the comments, what would stop cheaters from exploiting the cheater rating and keeping it artificially low to avoid detection? Well, no matter what Bungie does, they will always be in a forever escalating arms race against cheat makers. That has been the case ever since competitive gaming started. However, for Bungie, they do have an ace up their sleeve which is the structure of Trials of Osiris. In Trials of Osiris, at the end of the day, you have to win multiple matches in short bursts, with only one loss at most being forgiven. If a cheater tried to throw tons of Trials matches to artificially lower their win rate, it would ultimately be futile, as Bungie could easily filter out obvious strings of thrown matches 
and create a true win rate that isolates actual flawless attempts. Someone cheating in trials is doing so because they ultimately need to string together seven wins in a row, and it's impossible to bypass that structure. And yes, my contain the breach strategy wouldn't be perfect, and some cheaters would still get through the cracks. However, what it would do is drastically reduce the number and blatancy of cheaters. Think of how often you go on trials report and immediately call out someone as a cheater. It happens all the time, and my proposed system would kill off most of those cheaters overnight. The other thing to keep in mind is how many old accounts have also started cheating, with hundreds or thousands of hours played and vaults full of treasures. If an automated system like mine was put in place and tons of people got suspended from endgame PvP overnight, it would act as a deterrent to future cheating. Players in Destiny care about their loot above basically everything else, and if cheating was actually punished, like I've described in this video, a lot of cheaters would stop because the risk of a ban would become too high to tolerate. And one last thing, it's been suggested over and over again, but it is absolutely worth suggesting in this video as well, and that is to place Trials of Osiris behind a paywall. Make players have to own the most current season to be able to play Trials. This would reduce the number of cheaters, and for the people bound and determined to continue making burner accounts to cheat on, at least Bungie would be able to make a profit each time a cheater comes crawling back into the game. And if Bungie really wanted to clamp down on cheaters, they should implement IP address and hardware bans. Yes, people can spoof both of these things, but it would be yet another wall to go through to become a repeat cheater. And a number of cheaters aren't very smart and would be stopped with this kind of policy. And with all of these strategies, I think that the amount of cheating in Destiny 2 would diminish substantially and would go a long way to restore the competitive integrity of Destiny 2's PvP on Steam. Now, let's talk about a positive side effect that this anti-cheat philosophy could have on one of the other biggest problems with Trials today, account recoveries. Now, the contain the breach anti-cheat strategy that we discussed earlier in the video wouldn't just help steam and stop cheaters, but it would also strike a major blow to account recoveries. If you're unaware of what an account recovery is, it is when a skilled player hops on the account of a different player and then earns rewards for them. In PvP, this usually manifests itself in Trials of Osiris in which skilled players will jump on other people's accounts, then team up as a three stack, and then bulldoze their way through trials week in and week out, securing some amount of money for each successful Flawless card. This effectively keeps more stacked teams in the Trials playlist for longer than they otherwise would be, and it makes going Flawless harder for everyone. You may be saying, how are account recoveries any different from carries? In the case of carries, it's the actual person playing on their account, and if they're a weak player, it means that the team as a whole isn't stacked it can be beaten by a higher percentage of teams in the playlist. The anti-cheat strategy that I've devised would immediately trigger the recency factors, as a player with weak stats would suddenly be dropping bombs and fragging out each game. Sure, someone who only has their account recovered once in a blue moon would likely not see their cheater rating climb high enough to get suspended, but there are a ton of people that pay for recovs each and every weekend. Eventually, those long-term paying customers would see their accounts get banned, as they'd be flagged as cheaters. And in all honesty, good. Account recoveries ruin the competitive integrity of Trials as well, and it is against Bungie's Terms of Service. And the last thing I'll mention is that a lot of the cheating that happens today is when someone lets their account be recovered by someone else. The person who jumps on the account will then just cheat their way to a flawless and jump back off the account. If this anti-cheat system flags and stops account recoveries as well as cheaters, I think that would be a rare example of positive collateral damage 
and would be welcomed by the vast majority of the Destiny community. And just like that, we've come to the end of another video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed this latest installment and how we can continue to evolve Destiny 2. The PvP in Destiny, despite all its flaws, has been the primary thing keeping me coming back to Destiny again and again this last decade. There just isn't another FPS game on the market that plays quite like it. And for those of us on Steam, our PvP experience has been completely tarnished by the rampant cheating these past two years. Considering that Bungie is hiring data engineers specifically for anti-cheat measures, I have hope that a system like the one I described in this video will eventually make its way into the game. Because if it doesn't, especially with crossplay on the horizon, PvP on Steam will eventually die out and remain populated only by cheaters. And with all that said, that'll be it from me this week. It's hard to believe that I've been doing this YouTube thing for almost six months now, and thank you all for the continued support. And like I've said in previous videos, there is something big brewing behind the scenes, and I can't wait to show it to you guys really soon. As always, if you want to support this channel, make sure to leave a comment down below, drop a like, and hit that sub button. Have an amazing week, guys, and I hope to catch you all in the next one. This has been your host, Kujay. Cheers.